Years ago, I had a chance to record one of my first albums, Lord, You Are My Music. And I had an attorney who was representing me, and he got to be good friends with the attorney he was negotiating against. And when you lose the adversarial role of your attorney, you're in deep trouble. And so he told me, oh, just sign here. And, oh, there's no problem. Don't worry about it. Just sign there. And I'm signing. My... And before I realized it, I had signed away all of the rights to my first big album. I couldn't even record songs that I had written without first asking somebody else's permission. You know the song, Remember Me? When you come into your kingdom, oh Lord, the thief dying on the cross was gone. I had to ask permission to record my own song. I was heartbroken. But one day, a, a beautiful man who was a member of my board by the name of George Johnson said to me, you know, the Lord has impressed me to tell you to write that big company, that recording company, and tell them to give you your music back. I said, Mr. Johnson, if the Lord impressed you to do that, I'm going to do that. And I wrote him a nice letter saying, you know, I'm in ministry. And I know this music, I want people to continue to hear it for a long time. You know, I was trying to be as eloquent as I can. And they wrote me a letter back saying, you must be crazy. We don't give music back. But the guy had CC'd the letter up the chain to cover himself. And a few days later, I got a letter back from one of the vice presidents saying, now we don't normally do this. But, but, but we will sell you back the rights to your first album and then sell you back the rights to your second album. And Mr. Johnson helped me and, and we bought back the rights and I learned the meaning of redemption. I learned what it's like to be restored. I learned that redemption is when you buy back what was already yours. I want you to know that Jesus saw this sin ravaged earth and he came. But, but you know, I always hear about Jesus coming. I hear about the, the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. I, I hear about Calvary. But nobody tells you about what he left to come here. Nobody tells you that he was one with the Father and he laid aside incessant praise sung by immortal choirs who are never off key. Nobody tells you he was one with the Father and he laid aside anthems of adoration. Have mercy, Jesus. He was the fountain of life and laid aside the glories of heaven to become a member of the human family. He was the high commander in the heavens before whom all angels bow before his majesty. He was equal with God, laid aside his glory, humbled himself, left royalty, prince in the royal courts of heaven equal with God, stepped down from his throne to become the arbiter of our destiny and the representative of our humanity in the courts above. And with his human arm, he covered the whole race. Jesus! And with his other arm, divine arm, he reached all the way to the throne of God. And today, this same Jesus is about to make good on this promise in the book of Joel. He said, I'm coming back. 
and I'm coming to restore the years the locusts have eaten. 